The 2016 Steel Timber Sport Series is back bigger and better than ever. We take the best eight lumberjack sports athletes to five states around Australia, where they will chop and saw their way to glory. The competition will be fierce, but it will be one winner that takes the title and fights for the individual world crowd against the best in the world. With the top five representing Australia in the Team World Championships, the Chopperoos have won two times in a row. Can they make it a third? Jump in for the ride as the 2016 Steel Timber Sport season starts here. For stop number one, Australia's top eight axemen and sawyers roll into Adelaide, South Australia for the first time as part of the Steel Timber Sports Australia series. With searing 42 degree heat forecast for the day, our boys will be battling the elements, the machinery and themselves to be crowned the winner. So with that in mind, let's see who's on board for the series this year. Victorian larrikin Lawrence O'Toole is back. Will his raw talent translate into a title? Wiley veteran Matt Gurr brings his lifetime of experience. Jamie Head's the consistent all-rounder. And the super fit Brad DeLosa wants his name on the crown. 22-year-old Mitch Argent heads up Generation Next. Reigning champion Braden Meyer wants to go back to back. Cody Steers is the youngest athlete, but can he outmuscle his peers? And Brody Dingle is desperate for his slice of still timber sports glory. Over five rounds, they battle it out across Australia in six gruelling disciplines, from the gravity-defying springboard to the blood-pumping hot saw. In each discipline, top place is awarded eight points, zero for a disqualification. The five best athletes will represent Australia at the World Championships as a chopper -roo, with the winner of the series taking on other national winners to become the still timber sports world champion. So, with all that in mind, let's get into our first event. The springboard imitates an old lumberjack technique to overcome hard root wood. The athletes cut two pockets in a vertical log 2.7 metres high. With the help of the springboard, they climb to the top and cut through a 27 centimetre diameter log from both sides. Strength, speed and agility are needed for a win. First up, the master springboarder with 16 world and 15 Australian titles under his belt, Matt Gurr from Tasmania, takes on axe handy Victorian Lawrence O'Toole. Three, two, one, go. Here we go. These boys are really looking to get off to a big start here in Steel Timber Sports. You're looking for eight points from this event, and Gerd, you can see, puts in a four-pocket cut for his bottom board. Matt Gerd's looking pretty strong, way ahead of Lawrence O'Toole. O'Toole's looking to set his second board, but he fails to get up. I'm surprised by that mistake by O'Toole. He won't want to make too many of those today. Gurr is the master of the springboard, and I think he's got O'Toole well and truly covered in the heat. This is the first of three axe disciplines the athletes will compete in across the day. Gurr is onto the back. Here he is, starting to drive. O'Toole still on the front of the block. It's a good cut from Gurr, but it's going to be a few seconds off his Australian record. Gurr with the heat win, but will it be enough to claim maximum points? Yeah, well, when I got on top, the pole was actually moving quite a bit more than what I'm used to, and it put me off a little bit. I wasn't comfortable at all, but anyway, I got a win. In other springboard heats, New South Welshman Brad DeLosa and Queensland's Jamie Head couldn't match Gurr's speed, but recorded times that would fare well on the overall. And fellow Queenslander Mitch Argent took his first match-up with the 2015 Australian champion and world number three, Braden Meyer. Let's take a look at the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard. Matt Gurr's time did hold up. He remains king of the springboard, as expected. Young Mitch Argent, he leads the new generation of Axemen. And don't count out New South Welshman Brad DeLosa there in third. The Steel Stock Saw is the first of our soaring events. Athletes run equally matched electronic engine managed MS661CM chainsaws available from any steel store. Placing both hands on the trunk of the 40 centimetre block, Athletes reach for their chainsaws on the sound of the gun and cut two perfect cookies within the allocated 10 centimetres of wood or face the dreaded DQ. All in all, it's mind over matter and mastery of the chainsaw that get a stock saw win. 
In the first heat of the stock saw, we have previous round winner Matt Gurr fending off a very determined Jamie Head. Hands on the wood. Gets it. There they go. Cat-like reflexes from both saw operators. Looking pretty good on both cuts. Remember, on the right, Matt Gurr's already got eight points and both on the up cut now. But Jamie Head was the chopper who stock saw at the World Championships. Who's it going to be? That was too close to call for me. Wow, that was as close as it gets. With lightning fast times, who won the heat? With the Steel Timber Sports Series rolling into Adelaide, South Australia, a super close heat has the judges looking at the replay for a winner. I was a little bit nervous with that one last year. I got disqualified in that event and I was just looking to post a time and I'm pretty happy with that time. At least it wasn't a disqualification. Chasing down heads time is Victorian Lawrence O'Toole and the youngest Queenslander in the field, Mitch Argent. O'Toole is putting on a clinic with his saw, but misses Head's time by 0.05 of a second. Gets it. Next up, Brody Dingle versus Australian record holder Brad DeLosa. Oh, Queenslander Dingle fumbles on the upcut. DeLosa stays steady. Can he catch Head? He's close, but in this case, Jamie Head gets the time, the points, and the stock saw victory. It was a matter of milliseconds separating the stock saw placings with head first, Gurr second, and O'Toole third. Overall, on the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard, Gurr has pulled ahead after his two pet disciplines. I am pretty confident. My axes are cutting well, and I was on a bit of a downer after the springboard, but winning the stock saw really got me back up, and I think I'll go all right. The standing block is the second axe event of the day where athletes simulate an old school technique of felling a tree with an axe. Each athlete scribes their scarf on the 30 centimetre vertically mounted block and then slay at least 50% of the front side before traversing and turning to remove the back half, finalising their hit patterns with ripping overhand drives. We're into the second chopping discipline, the standing block, and it's Brad DeLosa against Brody Dingle. Three, two, one, go! Both men are experienced standing block choppers and have been competing in regular wood chops all summer long. Now Delosa's on the back. He's got the turn ahead of Dingle. Let's see what Delosa can do. Classic two up, two down hit pattern. He's going to start driving home now. Brad Delosa's looking really strong. Delosa with the time to beat. Next up, it's an all Queensland affair with Mitch Argent Three, taking on two, Jamie Head. One, the pair comes from multi generational wood chopping families, and the standing block is in their blood. Argent secured the gold medal for the Chopperoos in the World Championship, but today it looks like Head on the right has the edge. He really opens up now, unleashing underhand and overhand drives to power towards victory, while Argent's block just holds on. Gurr versus Meyer is a battle of the two strongest wills on the Steel Timber Sports Tour. Meyer makes the first move, and it looks like Gurr is having issues with his wood. He just walks around the back, an unusual transition in the standing block. It's all about pace. Meyer's really swinging well here, and he just rips that block off, and Matty Gurr seems to be going nowhere. I had three prune knots in the standing block, and very disappointing. I've been doing a bit of standing block training, and I thought I was going to go well, but I'm going for broke now. Another Victoria Tasmania heat. Cody Steers on the left is looking really strong against Lawrence O'Toole, who's a well-known standing block cutter. 
Let's see who gets ahead. They turn at the same time, but Steers looks to be a few hits ahead. He is in overdrive. He's picked up the pace. Oh, and his axe sticks, but he gets the win with a new Australian record. We're in a chopping event. Been doing a lot of wood chopping the last six months. Probably haven't trained on the other disciplines as much as I should have. Yeah, I prefer the chopping events, that's for sure. After that effort, there's no doubt who had the standing block bragging rights. Steers taking the eight points with a new Australian record. Jamie Head in second, and Lawrence O'Toole hot on his heels for third. On the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard, Head leaps into the lead with good mate O'Toole climbing into second. lucky enough to be here to watch the Steel Timber Sports Australian Championship here in person, you will know what I'm about to say. The pressure is intense. You can feel the power, you can hear the roar. It's the full tilt action. So how do our athletes cope both on the stage and off? We hit the boys up for some behind the stage secrets. I'll let you handle this one, Brad. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's just a sort of a zone where you focus on what you're doing, you know. It's just quite... Yeah, I don't know. I find it quite a relaxed atmosphere on stage. I don't really focus on the crowd too much, but um, Lawrence likes to play it up to the crowd a bit. So yeah, being on stage is made us good. Get up there, bit of a strut around. He's not yeah. used to being on stage with his clothes on, though, so yeah. it's a little bit different. Do you want me to take that jacket off? <laughs> I mean... There you go, take your jacket off. Nah, That's it's too cute. cold. That's a it's cute. too cold, mate. The easiest to wind up would probably be Matthew Gurr. A few older jokes that he doesn't get real... Uh, happy about but that's his age so he's got to wear it. I'm uh. the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mitch's daddy <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> Don't know, you're freaking useless without me. Yeah, brand new coming to the sport. Uh, just to just keep an open mind. Uh, you know, and take on board everything that everyone can uh, tell you. There's there's so much knowledge around, and it takes so much to uh, to hold on to all that knowledge about axes and wood and and about techniques. So you know, just just be an open book and and take it all in and choose what you want after that. Then the single buck is a two meter long cross cut handsaw, fittingly nicknamed the Misery Whip. It's the most physically demanding of the six steel timber sports disciplines. With its peg and raker system, the athlete pushes and pulls the single buck saw through a 46 centimetre pine log. Their wedger oils the saw and drives a wedge between the cookie and trunk to help avoid friction hang-ups. It's a true test of teamwork, fitness, power and technique. At the single buck, the battle begins with Matt Gurr from Tasmania taking on the in-form seven times Queensland champion Three, Jamie two, Head. One, oh. That's good, buddy. Come on. Keep it flat. Keep it flat. The single buck on, being the mate. only event where you can have an assistant, whose job it is to put a wedge between the cut in the wood and lubricate the saw. Brent Rees, the 2014 Team World Champion who missed out on making the Pro Tour this year, helps Head set the time to beat in what could be an overall victory. With a cracking time locked in, will it be surpassed or can Jamie Head come home with a win? We're back in Adelaide for the Steel Timber Sports Series and it's time for seven times Australian Axeman of the Year, Lawrence O'Toole from Victoria to take on Queenslander Brodie Dingle in the event that's nobody's favourite. Three, two, one, go! Oh. That's good, Brodie. 
With a time to beat of 19.83 in the single buck, you can see Bodie Dingle and Lawrence O'Toole really getting down to work. Although O'Toole is rocking his sore a little bit, Dingle's looking good. He's really improved his technique since last year's final. He's really putting in his all here, so who's going to win? It's Dingle by at least five strokes to O'Toole. This is a really crucial heat for both Braden Meyer and Brad DeLosa in the single buck. DeLosa is a champion single buck Sawyer and soared for the Chopperoos last year in the World Championship winning relay team. DeLosa's looking really good. Are they going to rein in Jamie Head's time and also maybe jump ahead in the overall placings? DeLosa wins it and he takes maximum points. You know, there's still a couple of events to go, so hopefully, um, yeah, I can go well in both of them and, um, yeah, sneak up and get the win. Delosa takes out the single buck round win and it's fueling his comeback here in South Australia. Jamie Head and Brody Dingle rounded out the top three in the Misery Whip. Overall on the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard, Head holds onto his lead with Delosa closing fast. There's Australia's best top eight guys here and although there's a long way to go, it's nice to be up there. If I have a good run in the underhand, I'll only need a consistent hot soil run. To win the Still Timber Sports last year was pretty amazing. It's an honour to compete for your country and to win gold at the team's world championships was pretty amazing. That's the best feeling you ever get, that. Unreal. To be young in the sport is also a good thing. I should be in the rookies thing, but I'm not. And to surprise a few of the older fellas, that they're getting past their time now, it's for us to step up and, and show it how it's done. I don't think it'll ever come down to just all the young kids. There's always going to be older fellas in the, in the group and putting the pressure on us young kids, but one day it'll happen and I'll probably be the older fella in the group. <laughs> Braden Meyer, 20 years old from Broughton, Victoria, Australian champion, and you're watching Steel Timber Sports Australia. The underhand chop is the final axe event of the day and resembles the old school technique of cutting felled trees down to size. 32 centimetre blocks are horizontally held in steel cradles as the axemen strike circular blows just centimetres from their feet. After removing approximately 50% of the front side, they pirouette to the back, devastating their block with power and precision, eventually driving the wood in two. What a special heat this is going to be. It's Jamie Head on top of the leaderboard and Brad DeLosa coming in second. DeLosa pipped Head in the springboard earlier in the day, but now they're in the last axe discipline and there is a lot riding on this heat. Head is around already, but DeLosa is destroying his block. They're almost synchronised, but the New South Welshman is coming home strong, and who's it going to be? DeLosa gets it, with head one hit behind. Cody steers against Lawrence O'Toole, and they're halfway into the front of the block. The underhand is such an entertaining one to watch, and steers pirouettes. Jeez, these big guys are lot on their feet. Steers has a big lead here, but O'Toole really needs a win. He's gaining on him, and this is a close one. The lanky Victorian, he has it by a whisker. Two, on paper, this one is the heat of the day. Braden Meyer against Mitch Argent, the two rising stars of the sport. Meyer is the world underhand record holder, and I mean, have a look at his work rate. And his block is just falling apart. There's some brute strength behind that axe. He makes it look so easy. He just keeps going in that circular motion. And there it goes. Braden Meyer wins his heat in Australian record time. Pretty happy with my time. I've been a bit down all morning. I uh, haven't gone very well, but I was coming into my favourite event there and um, I tried to give the best I got and I did that, so I'm pretty happy. We knew Meyer's underhand was a quick time and the leaderboard shows just how good it was. An amazing three seconds faster than second place Delosa. He's only young, but that was exceptional. Delosa now takes the overall lead on the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard, head dropping to second with the unpredictable hot saw to come. I just hope um, everything runs all right in the hot saw and I can get the job done, you know. So, yeah, I've only got a one-point lead and there's a couple of guys not far behind that. So it's not a, you know, not a give me, but, um, yeah, hopefully everything going well, I can pull one off. The hot saw is the final event of Steel Timber Sports competitions and the most critical soaring event of the day. 
with custom built chainsaws weighing in excess of 30 kilograms running 300 plus cc motorcycle or jet ski engines these adrenaline filled power saws clock up chain speeds in excess of 250 kilometers an hour Athletes must cut three complete cookies in just 15 centimetres of the 46 centimetre diameter block. Jump the gun, cut over the line or incomplete cookie will result in a DQ and end any chances of being crowned the champion. First up, Brody Dingle against Mitch Argent, both using the still supplied hot sauce. Argent won't be happy with that bobble at the bottom, but Dingle is surging ahead and he's done. Argent takes a look at his three cookies. I don't think they're all in one piece. He goes for a fourth just to be safe, but it's risky. He's going to be close to the line. Oh, that's probably the best run that I've ever put together, the hot saw. I don't own my own, so we've got to wait till we come to competitions to use ones that still have kindly um, donated for us to use. Got a good cut on stand one and a DQ on stand two. He's overcut his timber. Yeah, and no, it was good cut and some points, so that's what you always hope for. That's one good cut and one disqualification. Can the other athletes cut three safe cookies and will Brody Dingle's time handle the heat? With the premiere event for the day taking place and Brody Dingle cutting a lightning fast time, can the others chase him down? It's time for Matt Gurr, the master, to take on his apprentice, on Cody Steers. That's it. These two Tasmanians are looking pretty comfortable with their respective hot saws. Steers with his custom built monster and Gurr using the steel provided. And there's Gurr going for his third, but oh, he's absolutely had a shocker there. And Steers is looking to bank a good one. What's that going to mean for Matt Gurr? Meyer and O'Toole getting ready for their hot saw action. That's it. Meyer on the left is a little underprepared. O'Toole is straight into his down cut. That's a beautiful first cookie, but his second is pretty average, although he might have saved it. Here comes his third. And now Meyer's getting ready for his third, but are they both good cuts? With Jamie Head currently holding second position, he needs to finish ahead of Delosa and better than O'Toole to win the day outright. Let's join the action and see what happens. Classic still timber sports drama. My money has got to be on Brad Delosa here on the right with his custom built 325cc monster. Jamie Head's regular saw broke down this morning, so he's using the still provided one. Hands on the wood. Gets it. Both are keen to get a clean first start on their down cut. Delosa's got two in before Head's got his first, then a third. He is absolutely flying. Delosa takes the win. Delosa's almost two seconds ahead of Lawrence O'Toole. Head just behind. If Brad Delosa's got three good cookies, it's his day. The judges go in to inspect the three cookies and review the cut. What are the judges going to say about this one? We've got a good cut on stand one and a DQ on stand two. Overcut his timber. It was hot sore heartbreak for Delosa. Zero points for a disqualification. Gurr and Argent cop the same. The fastest time was Lawrence O'Toole's, followed by Brody Dingle and Jamie Head. After a high-pressure heat, Queenslander Jamie Head takes the South Australian crown, the picture of consistency. This also puts him top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard going into the next event. Yeah, I'm over the moon to uh, get the win here. First time Timber Sports have come to uh, South Australia and I was lucky enough to get away with the first place. I'm really happy with how I went today and, you know, it's a big step forward to becoming the Australian champion. 
Next time on Steel Timber Sports Australia, we head to Tasmania, home of Matt Gurr and Cody Steers, where our top eight will battle for valuable Volkswagen Amarok Championship points. So join us next week for more of the original extreme sport, Steel Timber Sports.